All right, so good afternoon, guys, and welcome to Fluid Mechanic Lecture. This is Lecture 10, um, so we have got only two more. So today, um, we're going to discuss the internal flow. You know, we have studied all year last week, and we'll continue with the internal flow today. So basically, uh, you already know this figure. This is one of the common example of the pipe flow, and it is very close to our real life. Not only we have the industrial application for pipe flow, but in household, we also have a lot of this thing. Uh, so we'll try to understand. So we already know um, the loss. This is the, we know the major loss. So basically what we know, the major loss this is due to the friction. And it is definitely possible to get some system where uh, there is no friction loss basically for the pipe flow. But we have one more loss. This is called the minor loss. So today we'll try to understand the minor loss. So the basic objectives, so the key objectives of this lecture is um, we'll try to understand the minor loss and for different set of um, in real life, the piping system it could be different arrangement. Let's say sometime in series, sometime in parallel set of, or and a lot of you know um, other components inserts uh, in the piping network. So we'll try to understand how to analyze this minor loss, how to you know um, calculate. The minor loss, the loss coefficient, uh, how to calculate the pump heads and the pumping powers to overcome the overall the flow resistance in the piping network. So that will be the one thing. And um, we will also try to understand, um, you know, how to measure the flow by using different you know, the flow meters. And we have a lot of different techniques, devices that we can use and we can calculate the flow flow rate and the pressure. So we'll try to un understand what sort of devices we have and how it works just quickly. So we, it's not that important, definitely not for the final exam, but we'll still try to understand it. So the minor loss. When um, this is a pipe, let's say this is a pipe, and we have, this is the water. The water is just going from this left to this right side. Okay, so that's the flow directions. So when the water is going from left to the right, what, um, and the other thing I should mention is, let's say um, this is a, a smooth pipe maybe. So small pipe means um, zero roughness. Here, uh, if we say this is the cross section, so that means this is the wall, the top wall and the bottom wall, uh, it is a smooth pipe, roughness is zero. What we can expect that the flow will go, you know, a steady way, like um, it will be more smooth flow, there will be not that must you know the the pressure variations if we if we say this is uh, the inlet point one this is the point two so we can say that the flow overall fluid will be so smooth there will be you know no no loss okay but um when we will insert a a so you can correlate it from here so this is a pipe and now if we insert a valve why we will insert a valve here what's the intention the main reason is we want to restrict the flow rate so that we usually use the valve in the piping networks this is the only target is we really want to restrict the flow rate we want to you know, increase or decrease the flow rates. 
So when it will happen, this is kind of a, it acts like a pin, a, some sort of um, resistance flow cannot just pass it, but it flow needs to deviate due to this obstruction here. So what usually happen um, when we insert this sort of bulb, we can see some, some loss here. Basically, you can simply say for this pipe, this is the surface area, or you can say this area from here to here, this is the flow, fluid flow surface area. But when we inserted this pipe, this valve here, then you will see um, it reduces like this. So the surface area, the, heat, the fluid flow surface area reduces. That means it becomes narrow. Now it, it is act, you know, acting like a, uh, you know, the stenosis pipe. So it's kind of the contractions. And what will happen due to this contraction, this uh, narrow surface area will expect high velocity here and the low pressure. So we will ex we'll experience some sort of pressure, you know, the, some loss. And this loss, we usually call, you know, we call this the minor loss. So in piping system, we not only use the valve, but we use all these components. When you're talking about a piping system like uh, here, you will see a lot of things kind of, of this bench, pulp, joining. Sometimes um, not everywhere in the piping system, the diameter is constant, but the, the pipe diameter it varies. So sometimes uh, it expands, sometimes the diameter reduces like the contractions and the different shapes of the inlet and the outlets. We use the elbow fitting, all these things that eventually, you know, give us some sort of minor loss. So when we will um, think about a piping system, we will get a lot of this and what we will get, we'll get the minor loss. So previously we know how to calculate the measure loss. And now we said we are going to talk about um, the, the minor loss. So what actually happened? This minor loss, this is very small. That's why it says uh, sometimes it is negligible. Let's say you have a long piping network. So um, if you have some bench or uh, some um, fittings or elbows, then we can say this minor loss is negligible. But my conclusion is now, I will show you two things. We have um, one pipe where we have the friction loss. And this is one pipe. Let's say um, we have kind of a, a, a stenosis section like this. So for this case, for this pipe, we have the major loss. Here we have minor loss. So I'm, t I'm just talking when um, we have all this thing, that means uh, this fitting valve or, or, or any, any of this arrangement or in such. This minor loss in some cases, it could be significant than the major loss. Is it possible? We said the friction loss is the major loss and all this reason, um, it is the basic causes of the minor loss. So what I said is minor loss, it could be significant or it could be higher than the major loss. Is it possible? So when I said minor, that means this is kind of negligible uh, loss, but, and the major loss, the friction loss, it is major, it's significant. So is it possible that the minor loss, it will be significant or it will be significantly higher than the major loss? What do you think, guys? Just yes or no. So it, it is very clear that major loss it is significant. Um, yes. So some of you said no, but it could be the minor loss. It could be significant. It could be higher than major loss in some cases. When, when you have a large, you know, long piping system then the minor loss is negligible. But 
if you have a couple of this insert in very short distance, let's say um, you have, this is the valve. Now you have um, another valve here. So we can say this valve is from this way. So this is another valve. You have one more valve here. So if you have a multiple, this component, at very close distance, then this minor loss, it could be higher or significant than the major loss. What actually happened? Um, I will just draw one more pipe here. Let's say this is a, a stenosis pipe, okay? And this is quite long. So the flow, uh, flow is going through this. Basically, the flow will be significant, you know, the fluid velocity will be significant here. Once the fluid flow will pass this narrow section, it will gradually, you know, so if the flow is fully developed here, you will see it will be become kind of this, okay, when it is a long pipe. So there will be some gradual um, transition of the flow. If you have just one uh, narrow sections, this kind of contraction, the pipe. But if you have a multiple like this in short distance, then flow will not get enough surface space. And in that case, it will, there will be some loss, there will be more loss, there will be more loss. In that way, when it will just, you know, you have more than one, this sort of component in your system in very close distance. In that case, the minor loss could be significant than the major loss. So this is the theory. And now how then we can analyze all this loss? In real case, it is really hard to you know, calculate this minor loss if you want to do it manually. So suppose you are using some fittings in your piping system from different manufacturer, so they have different, um, uh, you know, the um, product, and on, if you will see, so let's say I'm one manufacturer and you are one manufacturer. We're producing same fittings. It looks identical, but the loss coefficient it will be different. It could be different, slightly different for different manufacturers. So uh, we actually need to follow their handout, and also we need to um, just compare it with the. The existing setup or some um, of their measurements. So what actually happened? I said it is complex to calculate the loss coefficient. Then how we'll do that? So this actually makes our life easier. So basically, there are some established um, values, some benchmark uh, experimental data for all these different types of components, and uh, we usually analyze this loss, the minor loss by using the loss coefficient. This is called KL. And we say this KL is equal to Hazel over B squared 2G. This Hazel, you already know, this is the head loss. This head loss, it is the, the additional head loss. Let's say we put this um, valve. So due to this valve, we will have some head loss. This Hazel is the head loss due to this insert, due to this uh, inside of the valve. So what you can do, you you can just um, increase or decrease this um, section by using this valve. If you want to completely block the flow, then you can do it. If you say, okay, now I will just make it like 50% block or 75% block, you can just control it from here. So for different arrangement, you will have different head loss. And this Hazel, this is this irreversible weight loss due to this Block. And we know uh, the Hazel equal delta PL over rho G from previous class, like how to calculate the head loss. So I will show you uh, some equations and some charts where we will directly get this loss coefficient for different arrangements for bends or the inlets, the exits. You will see there are a lot of different arrangements. So and that's so it is really important when you will deal with a real project, you must need to check it carefully. 
and that we will try to understand. Maybe, um, it, you know, the first 45 minutes or 50 minutes, we'll discuss theoretical thing, and then we'll start with the technical problems. The technical problems are quite easy. So we said this is the, um, you know, the loss coefficient formula, KL, this is the loss coefficient. You know, this is the head loss, HSL, and V is the velocity, G is the gravity. You all of you know this. How? Uh, and then HSL is delta PL and rho G. Look, the question is how you can calculate this delta PL? This is the actually the pressure, pressure loss. We have two system here. This is without any insert, without valve. This is with valve. Same velocity, same flow rate, same diameter. Everything is same. This setup, this setup, everything same. We say this is inlet point one, outlet point two. So at inlet, the pressure will say P1. At outlet, we'll say pressure P2. The same thing when it is with the valve. So what will be the pressure variations between this point one and point two? So uh, we can say this is P1 minus P2, and this is also P1 minus P2. So that means the pressure variations between point one to two, how the pressure is, um, pressure drop is happening. When we will calculate that this has L, head loss, so when it's delta P, this delta P L, this is actually, it's, it is kind of, if I say, um, what is the pressure variations between when you use this valve and when you had no valve? So it is actually, actually, you look here, it is the pressure variations when you inserted the valve minus without the valve. And this variation, this is called the delta PL. If you don't know it, it's still it should be fine. But for some problem, you need to use this formula. So um, we're going to solve two problem where you may, um, yeah, maybe you do not need this. But what I said, you just keep in mind this loss coefficient KL equal HSL this and HSL equal this. So what we learn from this slide is all this component, it could lead some sort of minor loss and minor loss, it could be significant than the major loss. And we can calculate the pressure, pressure drop between uh, um, a system when we inserted the valve and so with valve and without valve. So if it is the arrangement, then what will be the pressure loss? So this is what we learned from this slide. So now I'll tell you just one thing from this slide. You can, you can also correlate this minor loss with the length of the pipe. So here we can see one expression. And this expression says, this is the length. So we have a pipe. This is the length. What is KL? Loss coefficient, the minor loss coefficient. What is F? F is the friction factor. D is the diameter. What we can see that this loss coefficient, it is also, it also depends on the length of the pipe. We understand from previously, okay, all this highlighted arrangement or insert, it is the reason for minor loss. But from this expression, what we can say, this is proportional, you see, L equal D over uh, F into K L. So we can say this loss coefficient, it also depends on the length, length of the pipe. And here, uh, if, if, you, if you are confused, like why K L equal delta P L rho V square, you, you need to just substitute this Hazel value here, and then you will get it. And if you further, um, you know, uh, simplify this, then you, you, you may get this as well. So forget about that. We are going to use these expressions for the loss coefficient in some cases, and for most of the cases, it will be given in the problem. So I can see some in the chat is the, okay, no, not that. So, okay, so what I said, um, I will not actually spend more time with this slide, but what I said, the loss coefficient, it is also equivalent. It is proportional to the 
the equivalent length of the system. There are a lot of things I can discuss, but um, maybe um, you may lose your interest. So what I will do, I will not go, you know, that deep from different angle, but um, I will just try to provide you the sufficient knowledge about this. Okay, here, this slide is very important. Uh, we already spent 20 minutes, more than 20 minutes, but you must need to understand this slide, guys. As an engineer, you must need to understand it. And this is, you can say, like 20% of today's lecture, if you can understand this. We have two things. So, we said earlier, the total and the head loss, this is major and the minor loss. Okay, so this is major loss, this is minor loss, we know. And we already used this expression for some of our previous problems. And for the minor loss, we said, okay, this is the expression for the minor loss. Look, this is KL, the loss coefficient, V squared 2G. Why is the summation? In a piping system, we could have been maybe multiple bends, multiple valves, the inlet, the outlet, all are related with the minor loss. So we need to sum all those uh, minor losses. We have got the second problem where I will show you how to do this. Now, this is the total head loss. And it is very, I, I believe it is crystal clear to you that, okay, this is quite easier thing. Now, look at these two figure. Can you see any difference between these two figure guys? You see, this is the inlet, the pipe inlet, and this is the pipe. The same diameter, the same diameter, this D, and this diameter here, it is the same. This plane here, and this diameter, it is the same. We can see this is the center line, this is the center line. Look, the, the streamline, the fluid streamline, it looks quite similar. It's almost the same, but what we can see for this case the loss coefficient is it's nearly 0, 0 0.03 and it is 0 0.5 it's kind of you know it's kind of you know how many times it's it's significantly higher the only variation only difference between these two systems is we can see in this case it is a sharp 90 degree angle and here you look at this section this is kind of a well-rounded shape well-rounded shape and you, you 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 can see that's the only difference and it's a small difference even it is not inside the five it is the inlet where the fluid is just going inside the five so this inlet section is really important you, if you want, you can take notes. The minor loss at the inlet section depends on the shape of the inlets, but it doesn't, you know, make that much difference when we have different outlets. That I will prove and I will show you. I'll discuss you later. So let's say this is the inlet. Inlet means how the flow is entering into the pipe. An outlet means you know it's going out. So here, what is happening? When it is the rounded shape, the well-rounded shape, fluid particles, we have one fluid particle, let's say here. This fluid particle, when it comes through this way, so I will put some arrow, that means this is the directions, like how this fluid particles are going. The same thing here, the same thing here. This is the it's the vector sign. Now, what is happening? When this fluid particle is coming here, due to this round, you know, this smooth change of the curvature, it can, you know, smoothly just make a turn like this and it can go this way. But when you are using a 90 degree shape, that means a sharp change of the angle. So this fluid particle, let's say we have one more fluid particle here, it cannot go travel like this due to the sharp change. What actually happened, it needs to go like this. 
So that means what actually happened, it creates some sort of zone here. This is, you can say, kind of stagnation section where the velocity becomes zero from the both end of the pipe. Yeah. So now you look, due to this 90 degree, this fluid particle, it cannot make a smooth turn. So it needs to go like this way. So that means now there is no flow. No flow, it creates some vortex. So there's no flow in this section, in this section. So what happened here? This pipe and this pipe physically they are the same diameter, but when it is working, the fluid flow is happening. It is this diameter, it becomes like this is the actual flow diameter. It is called this vena contractor, like the flow you know the surface area it becomes narrow so it it acts like a kind of a contraction the pipe big pipe becomes narrow so you see now you can remember the Bernoulli principle and if you know the mass conservation principle what actually happened for mass conservation principle so according to the the equation of continuity and the mass conservation principle the flow coming through the inlet and the outlet, it should be same. So the fluid velocity it will be maximum here. Due to this reason, you see the less fluid flow surface area, we will get higher loss. And the loss coefficient, that's why is significant here. On the other hand, like when we have this system for a well-rounded ship, it can make some small turning. And it, we have the whole diameter, that's the fluid flow surface area. And that actually minimizes the loss coefficient. So when you will design your system, any engineering project or research project, you see how this inlet actually important when we, you are just talking about the, the minor losses. And there is some, uh, some measurement like how smooth it will be we'll discuss it later on you see here this from this restriction this if we say from here to here if it is r so this ratio of this r and this d for this case it is greater than 0 0.0 to here but in this case it makes it's kind of a sharp 90 degree angles so i will show you how this turning, this smoothness of this uh, in light section, how it, how important it is with respect to this loss coefficient. So we have a chart later on. I will show you. So I believe you understand that why it is happening because of this. So the fluid flow surface area it reduces significantly about this section. So now. Here, look at this slide. During the exam, you do not need to do anything extraordinary, but you need to use these charts. When this is the inlet, so the flow is going this way. So this is the inlets, all are inlets. You look, in this case, um, for this pipe inlet, we, we say, this loss coefficient is uh, 0.8 when it is a shower phase that, that what I was talking about earlier. So if it is like this, then it is 0.5. But here, it just, I, I, I can explain it like this. I need to draw some streamline here. So when this flow is coming, let's say this um, fluid is coming this way. So it cannot actually go that way in some cases if the it also depends on the speed of the flow in some cases it could be like this so we will see this arrangement and this arrangement it looks quite similar but we have the pipe stated from here that means 
fluid actually in this section it cannot go that way so that increases the overall the loss coefficient you see it's 0 0.8 but in this case it is just going this way so you see it's relatively lower than that case and now we discussed the surrounded on now when does the pipe exit so this is for the inlet so the inlet design it is it is really important i'll show you one chart later on but when it is the exit you know this is the inlet and this is the outlet so when let's say this is the pipe coming this way and it is just going up outside through these outlets it doesn't affect the overall performance you look here in all this case it says the loss coefficient it is equal to the kinematic corrections factor level this is also the same this is also the same the same same arrangement for this three you, you look for this different different arrangement we had different loss coefficient but when we're talking about the pipe exit it is not affecting the results can anyone actually explain why because you look, the flow, this is the fluid flow, streamline. So when it is coming, it's going straight away. It's, it, is, it is not getting any kinds of obstruction here. The same thing happening here, you see, it's just going this way. So this change, it doesn't, you know, I can sense it will not actually influence the overall performance. The same thing here, it's just going this way. So it is it doesn't matter actually what is happening here when it is the exit but when it is the inlet it matters because the flow is coming all this section not only from here it is coming this section as well i believe you understand guys and that's so when it is the pipe exit we said it is always equal to the 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 kinematic the correction sector value and you know when it is laminar flow it is equal to the two for the turbulent flow it is equal to 1.05 so if you're solving a problem a turbulent flow problem and you have an outlet okay so you can simply use uh, it is 1.05 so that you need to take notes so you will definitely get question in the exam where you need to use the the the, the minor loss coefficient so today I will solve problem where we will have inlaid outlets, we'll have the valves, maybe the bends. Okay. So keep notes from this slide. The inlaid shape it matters, but the outlet shape it doesn't matter for minor loss. And this is the reason why, because the fluid is simply just going out. No shape can change the flow directions. So that's why. It, the minor loss is actually it's not um, different for different shapes outlets so is that make sense guys do you have any anyone got any confusions because uh, as i said like you you must need um to use this in the final exam um so you, I, I believe you should understand it uh, we'll provide more you know comprehensive informations you see, I will only actually explain the minor loss today because this is really important. The major loss, the calculation procedure is complex because we need the friction factor. But today I actually, you know, um, uploaded a spreadsheet in um, in the the team side, so you can get the spreadsheet like how to calculate the 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 friction factor by using the Excel. So I got one question in the chat. Yeah, we already uploaded every materials. Um, so you can get everything from um, there. Yeah, so everything I already uploaded. So now you look here. If I say you will get one question from this slide in the final exam. Do you believe guys? So in this slide, it, we have a lot of information and you will get the question in the final exam where you must need to use this slide so we have two things 
here. Can you tell me what it is? This is inlet. This is the outlet. Okay. In this case, what we can see, this pipe it becomes suddenly it becomes you know this. Okay, just a second. All right. So in this case, you can see it is a sudden expansion. This diameter and this diameter. You look, this is small diameter, this is the large diameter. So sudden expansion and this is the contraction. So initially it was higher and now it becomes low. You will get a question in the exam where I will provide you the problem, maybe sudden expansion, sudden contraction or gradual expansion or gradual contraction. So in this case, this is sudden expansion, but you look here, but this problem, it is not sudden expansion. It's gradual expanding. You look here, if I draw the line, you see it's gradually become larger. The same thing happening here. You see it's gradually become smaller. So this is important. So do you think uh, this slide contains a lot of information? So this is sudden expansion, gradual expansion. When it is sudden expansion, you can use this chart and you can calculate the heat transfer coefficient, it's the loss coefficient, minor loss coefficient. How you can do that? It is this one for sudden um, contractions. Okay, this is for sudden contraction. What do you need? You need to know this diameter D and this diameter D. So for example, let's say this is um, two millimeter, for example, this is one millimeter. Or this is, um, let's say 0 0.2 millimeter, or this is 0 0.1 millimeter, for example. So then what will be this d square over d square value? You calculate it. It should be uh, 0 0.04, it should be 0 0.01, isn't it? Other way so, around. Say again, please. Shouldn't it be 0 0.01 over 0 0.04? Okay, the small d and the couple. Yeah, that's true. So it's small d over the capital D. Yeah. So what I was trying to tell you is you just calculate this ratio. So let's say, for example, you have this is 0 0.4. Just for example, okay. The 0 0.4 means you have this is the point. So let's say this. And uh, your loss coefficient should be somewhere here, isn't it? Your loss coefficient should be somewhere here. So what you can do, uh, you can calculate it and you can do some interpolation. You can get the KL from here, if it is sudden contraction. We have, we have got a question and I will do this. I will, maybe I will use this um, palace and I will show you how to do all these interpolations. If it is sudden expansion, then it's more easier. Like you need to just use this formula and you can simply calculate the loss coefficient. Now for gradual expansion, it is important. Why it is important? When it is gradual expansion or gradual contraction, it makes, in general, the pipe will be like this. Let's say this is the pipe, but it's gradually expands. So we have an angle here, an angle here, theta. So this is the angle. So when it is the 20 degree, uh, this expansion, that means here 50 degree, 15, this is 15. So for 20, this is 10, this is 10, for example. So when it is for 20 degree, and the ratio of this small d and this capital D is 0.2, the KL, loss coefficient is 0.3. For 0 0.4, loss coefficient is 0 0.25. So let's say you got a question in the exam where uh, the angle theta is 20 degree and the ratio of this capital D, small d, or small d capital D, this is let's say 0 0.3. So you don't know for the loss coefficient value about 0 0.3. So you do the interpolation here. So I will show you how to do that. The same thing here for the contractions, uh, we have 
the data available uh, from the literature for this different angle 30, 45, and 60. Now you can ask me a question that, okay, we have um, all this information for angle theta equal 20 degree, but what happens if we get a question in the exam? It is 30, 40. So look, we'll not provide you a question in the exam um, where the data, the information is not available, okay? So do you think this is for the sudden expansion? This is for the sudden contraction? This is for the gradual expansion? This is for the gradual contractions? We are going to use all these informations and we're going to solve problems uh, in the exam. Okay, so I'm moving to the next slide. Here, um, you have some more arrangement because so far what we said, it is the inlet, outlet, and the expansion and the contraction. So now, if we have the bands, um, so the band could be sometimes smooth, sometimes like kind of the 90 degree, sometimes you, you see here um, it, I, i'm not going to discuss a lot this slide basically all informations are given you see different arrangement here like this is 45 degree um you, you look here this is different systems and for different valves so we have all the informations here so if you have some problem in the exam where you can see that you have all this arrangement and you can simply use um, these expressions. Here you can see some, the for the gate valve, when it's fully open, then this point too. If you have a gate valve, let's say one fourth open, half open, you know, just three quarter is open, closed, sorry, three quarter is closed, then this is all the, um, you know, the fresh, you know, the minor loss coefficient. And you look here, when it is fully open, it is only 0 0.2. When it is just, you know, the three quarter is closed, you see it's 17. So the path, that's the only, you know, we can say, we, we know that a lot of inserts and all those arrangements, I said earlier, like the path, the inlet, outlets, the contraction, expansion, all are responsible for the minor loss, but the pulp, gate valve is, we will get the most significant minor loss from the valves. And now you see if you have a five with three valves in very short distance, and it's almost closed, then you can see how significant will be the major minor loss. So it will be then a major loss and maybe it will be just higher than the principles. So I'm not going to discuss this slide. Uh, you have all the information, you can, you can check it later. You can go through this later one. I will just, um, uh, this is, uh, we discussed actually uh, earlier. I, you already know this formula from the previous slide. And we know this, uh, this theorem here, it becomes this uh, narrow section. We say this is the vena contractor. The flow uh, becomes highly turbulent in this section and the low pressure in this section. This is the graphical representation. So this figure and this figure are same. Look, this is the, the contours, the, the flow contours. And this is some graphical representation of how the pressure head and how the, the total head is changing. So you look, do you think, guys, in this section, so according to the theorem, the pressure will be higher here, isn't it? And the velocity will be lower at that section. So we know from the theorem that in this section, because this is kind of no flow, this is kind of no flow. So we'll have the high pressure here and the low velocity here. Isn't it? So do you agree with me, guys, that in this section we'll have the high pressure and the low velocity? Yeah. How about others? So everyone of you just um, simply agree with me, right? So if you um, actually 
yeah, if you don't want to speak, guys, you can write it down. That's no, it's what I said, it's not correct. In this section, the velocity will be higher because it's now a kind of a narrow pipe. It becomes narrow. It's how the nozzle works. The nozzle outlet it is very small, so the fluid velocity is significant over there. So in this section, the velocity will be higher and the pressure will be lower. Because we know if velocity is higher, pressure is lower. And that you can see here. This is the pressure heads. It is, you see, the pressure is decreased here. But the velocity heads, it's, it's higher. So this is the heads. So this is actually how some graphical presentation. So uh, basically, uh, we, we discussed why it is happening because of, uh, it, due to this sharp change of the angle, it can the fluid cannot just make a smooth turn. We because we got some sort of um, this stagnation zone. Do you know what stagnation means? Stagnation point means when the velocity is zero. So in this case, nothing is happening. So fluid only going through these sections, and this section is kind of the stagnation area, and uh, the flow area significantly reduced. So all of you should speak with me. This is um, week ten. Why well, you people guys feel shy? Um, so you, you will you will just participate. You will ask me question. You will answer me. Then I can feel you know, comfortable. Otherwise, I I feel like maybe I'm just doing and you know you're not enjoying this. It's so boring. So even if you're not enjoying, you should you should speak. You should just answer the question. Otherwise, it's really hard because I cannot see. I cannot see your facial expression so it's hard to actually continue with this so yeah just if i ask something sometimes i want to confuse you because i want to see whether you are concentrating or not this is a theoretical thing but it's very important for real life because all of your engineer and fluid mechanics you, you must need this concept for different engineering problems here this is I told you that I will show you a chart and I'll show you how this rounding, let's say this rounding, like how smoothly you will make your inlet and how it affects the overall loss coefficients. You look here, this is the R, this is the D, R over D, that's the ratio. You see when it is zero, what it means? It zero means this that means it is 90 degree angle then we found it is 0.5 the maximum now if we make it more smooth you see like at this point you see now when we make more smooth you see this loss coefficient gradually decreasing so this gradual rounding of this inlaid surface leads this sort of decrease of the loss coefficient so um this is really important when you will design any product if you work with some related industry or if you have your own project you need to design optimize your system this is really important so it is not only the angle but we need to think about some other thing like in some cases let's say we have the piping system uh in our kitchen or in our bathrooms. So that is a space is another issue. Sometimes we cannot make some smooth turn. Let's say you are just driving a car. This is one road. And this this is one road and this is another road. So here is your bacon. Here is your bacon. So in this case, you will not get much space to make it turn. But here maybe you can make, you have more space. So in real case, we know the theory that, okay, if we make it well-rounded shape, we'll have minor loss. But we'll face some problem in real cases where we have the space limitations. So then you need to think about, okay, you need to, come up with some creative design like how you can optimize this 
limited space and this design. So then you, you must need all this understanding. So you will not get everything straightforward in, in real case. You will find a lot of you know, complicated projects in real life. And then you must need to apply all those theories. So piping system, it, it doesn't mean that, okay, we know theories, we'll do that way. It also related with the cost, the surface area, and, you know, and definitely the overall performance of the system. So, and I was talking about one more thing, how we'll, we'll start with the problem soon. I told you the outlet design doesn't matter. In this figure, it will tell you why the outlet shape, any pipe, outlet shape is not a matter. Actually, what happened here? Let's say this is a lake. And this is a pipe, you are just, or it is a water reservoir. The flow is coming this way. And uh, the water is just, you are filling the water. Um, so when the water will come, what will happen? It will go directly like this. And then we already have the fluid here. This fluid will mix with this fluid. It will become, it will just gain a zero velocity because the fluid is already, you know, at rest at this reservoir. So when the fluid will come here, it will not move anymore. So it will gradually become, you know, get a zero velocity. That means we will have all the kinetic energy that means due to the velocity, it will lost, it will becomes to the thermal energy. In that case, um, it will not accelerate the velocity. So, what will happen? The velocity will gradually decrease and it will become zero. It will mix with this, this fluid. So basically this shape will not affect your minor loss when it is submerged, provided when it is submerged into the any other ambient fluid, water or air, whatever it is. So it will then gain a zero velocity. So this shape, it will not affect the overall, uh, the minor loss. And now this is one thing you see, uh, the similarly, so far we were talking about this inlet and the outlets, this inlet outlet, what will happen? This in middle like this, the elbows. So you can see when it is making the sharp front, the loss coefficient is significantly higher than the, the smooth turn because this is the same reason so it can easily just make a turn like this. But here it will be kind of like this. So we'll get some sort of stagnation in these sections. Even um, we will we will also you when you will do this then you will you can see if you search for some safety result then you can observe the contours where we have the zero velocity over there. So we need to move forward. We say the valve, we usually use the valve. Um, this is one of the most important reasons why we get uh, the significant, the loss. And we, what actually happened, I, I explained, due to this valve or any times of kind of the sharp changes, the flow area, it becomes kind of narrow and that actually um, influences the overall performance and we get the, the you know, significant minor losses. Uh, we'll solve one problem, then we can explain this one. Now we have got a problem. Uh, yeah, so we have got this problem. We'll now solve this problem quickly. This problem is, I can tell you, um, this is very important for final exam. Maybe I'm solving this. In final exam, you can get a question like this. Okay, let me solve it at first. And then what sort of modification you can expect for final exam, then we can discuss it. So for this problem, uh, you will see, we have a six, six centimeter diameter in lead pipe and the outlet pipe diameter is nine centimeter. So it's given in the question. So basically this pipe, if it is no expansion, so it should be like this, isn't it? If there is no, certain expansion, it should be like this. What we can see, um, the walls are expand and the, the walls of the expansion section are angled 10 
degree from the axis. So uh, we can say this is 10 degree and this is 10 degree. So we have got this problem. The 20 degrees are in expansion from the theories. I was showing you that, that chart just a couple of minutes back. The average velocity and the pressure, um, you, you look here, the average velocity, pressure of the water before the expansion section are 7.5 and 100, 150 kPa. So if we say this is 0.1, this is 0.2, we can say this is velocity V1, this is pressure P1. Does that make sense? So we say this is velocity V1 and, uh, you know, before the expansion section, so we don't know the velocity and the pressure at the sections. Determine the head loss in the expansion section here and the pressure in the larger diameter. So we need the pressure here and we need the head loss here. So that we're going to calculate, okay? So it's, pretty, it's, it's an interesting problem. We need uh, the head loss. Okay, and we need the pressure. So the first is the head loss. I believe all of you understand this problem. This is six meter, this is nine centimeter, 10 degree, 10 degree angle, overall 20. This is in like we define it is one. This is we define two. The velocity here, P1, P1. This is P2 um, and HSL. We need to calculate now. Initially, before going to solve this question, we'll use some assumptions that um, we can solve this problem. So we'll, we'll consider uh, this is a fully developed flow and turbulent flow. We don't know, um, but all engineering problem, it is uh, basically turbulent. So we'll consider this is a fully developed turbulent flow and a steady incompressible flow. Right. So let's say this is a steady and incompressible flow. And let's say this is fully developed turbulent flow. We will use another assumptions here. When it is um, the fully developed turbulent flow, uh, we know that the energy equation uh, contains a term, the kinetic energy correction factor for, we can say it is one to 1.06, that's the, the range. And for laminar flow, this is two. I will say this is 1.06 here. In some cases we used 1.03, 1.05, so you can use any. But we are using just the highest on 1.06 here. So what do we got now? Um, the alpha and alpha to alpha equal this. Right, now we need the head loss. So head loss means uh, Hays L. And we know formula Hays L equal KL beyond square 2G. I showed you this formula in the very first slide of this lecture. So we, if you want to get this Hays L, then we need the KL. So we need the KL, the loss coefficient. Isn't it? Yes, we need the loss coefficient. So now let's calculate the loss coefficient. When we will calculate the loss coefficient, see, when we will calculate this loss coefficient, we found the theta, this is equal 20 degree. Okay, theta equal 20 degree. We know the small diameter is six centimeter. The capital diameter is nine centimeters. So small over capital diameter is six over nine. So it will be uh, 0 0.667, 0 0.667. So that's the, the diameter ratio, small d, capital D. So we need the loss coefficient for this value and for this angle theta equal 20 degree. Let's go back to that slide. It is a sudden expansion. It is, a, you know, in this case, what is happening? 
this is a, a gradual ex expansion problem. So we'll go here. Yep. Yeah. So this is a gradual expansion problem. What do we know? The, the diameter ratio is 0.667. And you can see it is in between this two value. It is in between these two values. So definitely our loss coefficient, it will be in between 0.15 to 0 0.10. So we now need to do some interpolations. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll do the interpolations for this problem. So let's, um, let's go there again. Oops. Yep, so I will just write it down here from that, you know, that table. So we know um, when it was um, 0 0.6, the diameter ratio, the loss coefficient it was 0 0.15 but for our problem we have 0 0.667 and we don't know this loss coefficient we are going to calculate for 0 0.8 we got this 0 0.1 okay so we are going to do the interpolations all of you know how to do the interpolations right so this is a week 10 so i'm not going to actually show you like okay this minus this over this minus this same thing for so i can simply write here the scale from interpolation we'll get this one three three so you know the interpolation formula uh if you check the first couple of weeks this one minus this over this one minus this the same thing for the right hand side and then if you use the calculator then kl equal point one three three so we have got the loss coefficient now once you've got the loss coefficient put it here then you will get the head loss so that's the first part of this problem so it's not hard we were talking about a lot about the theories because we need it in real life and when you're doing this stuff you at least you need to do because when, <laughs> when you will just go for an interview and if someone asks you a question then they'll ask you who teach you these subjects so that's how just try to you know, explain the theories because it's made Anyways, so the head loss. It is HSL or KL B square and 2G. All right. So B is actually the velocity at the inlet. The KL, it is 1.33. The velocity is 7 meter per second square. And it is 2 into 9.81. So we'll get it 0 0.333. Meter. This is the head loss. We have done with the first part of this problem. Now, yeah. guys, it was P, it was P1, it was P1. We need to calculate the pressure here that we will calculate according to the question. Do you know the velocity here? What is the velocity here? A doubtless section. Can you can you actually um, calculate the velocity at doubtless section? Now you can ask me why we need the velocity. We need the pressure. So we don't need velocity. If you want to calculate the pressure, you need the velocity because we need to now apply the energy equations between this inlet and the outlet. That means point one and two. So when we will um, answer the second part of this problem let's use the energy equations between section one and two so it is p1 rho g v1 square it definitely alpha one v1 square 2g j don the pump it is equal p2 rho g alpha 2 v2 square 2g J2 and the turbine heads plus the HSL. This is basically the uh, the energy equation. In this case, do we have any any mechanical devices like say the fan, turbine, pump? We don't have anything, so we do not need to actually write it. 
okay what is the elevation here this flow is going this way do you guys think we have some sort of elevation here what do you think i'd say there's no elevation change no elevation that's correct so we can just simply cancel it out yeah now we know the pressure we know the density and gravity alpha one the the kinetic energy corrections factor value b this velocity we know gravity we know pressure p2 we're going to calculate so we do not know the velocity and we calculated the, the haste l here so it is also known so what we don't know from here is this velocity and all of you know this system or every system for pipe flow it should follow the mass conservation principle so we can simply say the mass flow here mass flow here same and once we know the velocity here we can simply calculate the velocity for this section so from the mass conservation principle from the mass conservation principle we can say the mass flow for this section and mass flow for section two this is equal and we know the mass flow is the density you know the velocity the area density velocity area you can cancel out this density so uh, the velocity for section one is seven and the area is pi diameter squared so it is um, diameter here is you know the six so six centimeters so converted into meter so it is 0 0.06 it is a square over four and this velocity we are going to calculate so it is pi and this is nine so 0 0.09 this is a square over four we can cancel out this pi by four this is pi by four so um we'll have the velocity v2 and it will be 3.1 on meter per second so we have got the velocity here right now you know everything you know everything you just substitute the value here in these equations so you know this v2 you know this height of every information you know except the p2 the pressure and that's the solution so look we are talking about a lot of theories and sometimes it is confusing maybe but when you solve the problem then you can tell me oh the theories are confusing so why you are going to discuss theory you just solve some problem during the lecture that's not right no but in many subjects um, uh, we mainly solve problem but you're not doing the subjects for solving some problems only this is the requirement for final exam but you must need the, the solid understanding of the subject and the theories that's the way you discuss more theories in the lecture and some relevant problem and tutorials we, we have designed for the problems but not for the theories yeah but people have some misconception like mm, they don't that in the lecture because they thought oh, it is just a waste of time but it is not it is really important if you really want to dominate in your real life in your professional life if you want to just lead your uh, industry you need all the skill the, the technical the soft the management all the skill you need so, yeah anyways i believe um all of you are attending the lecture so i should not tell you this thing so this is v on a square 2g and it will be you know the p2 rho g alpha 2 b2 square 2g and hey so 150 kpa converted into pascal so 150 thousand density mm, what is it is water so 1000 so gravity 9.81 in, in the exam we will provide all this information okay whether it is 9.8 or 9.81 that you don't need to worry about it okay um even this one will provide it okay so you don't need to worry about anything just practice all the problems and take the final exam 
should be more than enough that what i can tell you and also you can practice all the practice quizzes that what i'm uploading every week now so this is 1009.81 all put 1.06 uh the velocity we really got 3.11 into 9.81 and the hazel the head loss we got 0.333 so the fresher p2 will have 168 kpa so this is the pressure we've got there's the solution i believe um all of you understand this uh because it was not a hard problem uh let me check whether we have some question or not oh, question here okay so do you guys have any, any question if you do not have any question now i will move to the 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 second part of this lecture that is more important the flow arrangement um yeah the when will if you just try to imagine a piping system here it is. You have two different arrangements, series and parallel. So this is um, kind of the series, and this is the parallel system. This is the only two system, and you see, put the series on, you will see multiple arrangement. So when the pipes, uh, kind of the series arrangement, you see, we said this is the inlet pipe, this is the outlet pipe, and the brands started from here. Even this branching pattern are not same, even they are not parallel. Um, it is, you see, it's not parallel, it's the highly asymmetric. Um, and the other thing is the diameter. Here, this diameter and this diameter, you see, it's still different, but this inlet diameter and the outlet diameter is the same. So according to the fluid mechanic principle, when we have a piping network like this in series or parallel, what will happen? The flow rate will be same in each pipe. And the total head loss, it will be sum of the head loss for the different pipe, individual pipe. So if we say this is here, the flow rate here, flow rate here, it will be same. And the head loss, the total head loss, it will be the head loss for this pipe, this pipe, this pipe, just you need to make summation. When it is parallel, you, let, you may have different um, arrangement like this. This is um, kind of the sudden contraction, or maybe more than one, or maybe different types of diameter like this. So when it is in parallel, if I say this is point one, this is point two, according to the fluid mechanics principle, the flow rate it will be same at this two point okay then let and the exit and the head loss it will be again you know the uh, head loss this, the summations of the head loss for this section this section and due to the sudden contractions so if you if you look at this it is the head loss for this pipe head loss for this pipe and this head loss for this contraction sections. So you need to consider all those things when it is in, in parallel. So this is two arrangement. We are going to, you know, um, actually in real life, most of our problem is these two systems. So uh, this is for parallel, this is for series. Now, here, yeah, uh, when we have the, uh, it will get many problem in parallel. So when it is the parallel, we said two pi, okay, so in parallel pipes, so there are flow rates. Um, we, we can actually, you know, try, we can obtain some relationships um, for parallel systems. So what actually happened um, here, we say the head loss for one pipe and then another pipe, they will be equal. So he, it is some mathematical expressions. Uh, I can just drive it, it is not hard. Um, you know, it, it says, uh, the the loss here the frictional loss and you can obtain this expression and you can show it is in terms of the velocity even you can uh, just convert it into the flow rate for when you did it in flow rate you just multiplied the area here i will skip this slide we do not need this expression a lot in real life even but for some complicated problem we may need it 
I will only just tell you two things. When you will have this piping networks, oops, when you have this piping networks and you want to calculate the pumping power and you want to decide how to select the pump, you need to, uh, when you will, the basic thing is when you will analyze this system, you need to keep in mind two information. One is it should must follow the mass conservation principle. And the second thing is the pressure drop between the two junctions. It will be, you see it says, it must be same for all parts between two junctions. So that I will, I'm not going to explain it now, but I will just uh, explain it when I'll solve the problems. But maybe it will not come now, but we can get uh, these theories when we'll solve the tutorial problems. So you can just read it. Uh, you will get a lot of um, discussion from the book on these two points. So I believe you all understand this. And the second thing is also the same. So the pressure drop, um, it will be just, it will be same for all parts between two junction or for the branches. This is the equation you need to use in final exam. Thank you. You can take notes. This is the equation you need to use in final exam for this pumping problem. You will get a question where you need to calculate the friction loss, you need to calculate the head loss, you need to calculate the pumping power. Uh, so that's sort of question you need to solve in final exam. What will be the problem? We'll give you a similar schematic. So uh, I will not take much time. Uh, we have got one more problem. We can finish even with earlier, okay? We do not have, uh, we have the, some flow meters that I will show you. Uh, because that is not that was important, but I will show you. But this slide is very important, and after this slide, we have one problem. Who can tell me what it is, guys? Can you tell me what it is? Energy equation. There's the energy equations. That's correct. In this energy equations, when um, we have a piping system without pumps or turbines. So without pump and turbine, uh, so then we do not, if it is without pump or turbine, then we do not need to consider the, the pump or the turbines. But if we have with pump and with turbines, then this is the energy equations. Now I will tell you, this equation so this uh, figure here look this is one water tank this is another water tank just spend a couple of minutes with me try to concentrate this is our pump we are trying to just pump the water from this tank to this tank we have some sort of elevation here this is the elevation here and the flow water is going this way this is the point one this is point two all of you know we can say the velocity is p1 v2 velocity here pressure p1 pressure p2 here it is the air water interface this is the air water interface we can say this is the atmospheric pressure the gas pressure so both the pressure velocity us at this point and this point can you say they are same we can and we can cancel out these terms. Is that correct? Do we have any turbine here? We have the pump, but we do not have any turbine. You can cancel out the turbine as well. So what else you have? You see, you have this J1. You have this J2. This head loss is the pump head. So the the pump heads, it becomes like J2 minus J1 and Hazel. It is all about the elevation. The pump heads, we know already. The pump heads means this is the height. And this is the formula you need to calculate. You need to use when you will calculate the pump heads. And we'll give you a question in the exam where you need to calculate the pump heads and the pumping power. The pumping power means density, gravity, volume fluid and the pump. We, we solved the problem today. And you already know this formula. 
So this is the problem you need to solve in the final exam. Kind of a similar problem. I mean, you need to solve, you need to use these equations. And this is kind of the formula, like how you can calculate the efficiency. So I'm moving to the next phase. It is one of the charts uh, you can, you can just go through the books. I'll quickly tell you in one minute this chart. This is x axis of the flow rate. This is the head. This is the efficiency. You can see we have three different curves. This dotted one is the efficiency. This is the pump heads. And this is, we say, the system curve. System curve, or it is actually the curve what we need to draw the heads with respect to the flow rate. So this is called the system curves. We can see the efficiency, the efficiency and the pump heads. It is from the benchmark experimental measurements. The flow rate, when it is increasing, we can see this pump heads requirement is decreasing. For the pump heads, we have two things. The pump head will be maximum at this point at the vertical axis. This is called the maximum head. And this point, this is called the free delivery. The system will start operating when this curve and this pump head, they will intercept. So this is the point, this is the operating point. So that means it will be the flow, it will be the flow rate, and it will be the head. And this is the operating point. And the efficiency, it increase with the flow rate, and then it decreases. It's kind of the projections. You, if you throw a piece of stone just to the upward direction, let's say to the direction of the sky, then it will travel some distance. Then it will stop and then it will fall again. So the efficiency is how it acts like this. Old definition, you do not need it for final exam, but when you will analyze any, let's say you work with an industry, so you need to uh, actually prepare a report based on the performance. Then you need this sort of charts and you need to compare, you need to, um, yeah. So otherwise this is not important for exam for, or you do not need it uh, for any technical problem. When you will solve any problem, we do not need it. This is actually how this, it is just a complete picture of the system, how the pump heads um, change with the flow rates and uh, how the efficiency change what is the operating point so that's it so i if you if you're interested and you can go through this uh, we have the total you know a comprehensive discussion in the book in every book you will get the discussion on the figure you already know this this is the roughness factor for different materials so uh, we, we need this for one problem so that's why i put it here we have different materials and the corresponding roughness value. This is the problem. You can expect a similar problem or kind of similar problem in the exam. And where you need to calculate, um, you know, a lot of information, at least three to four different informations. So let's start with this. It is the tank, it is the pipe, this is the tank, we have what it is, it is the gate, the valve. We'll now consider the minor laws and the other thing. We do not have any mechanical device here, pump, turbine, nothing. But look, we have a sharp aged inlet. This is the inlet. Now, think about it. We had um, the charts earlier, and I, we already know, like, the, the loss coefficient for different types of setup. So here, this is the jet two, we don't know, jet one, this elevation we don't know, we said this is point one, this is point two, this is the sharp A's entrance, this length is point, the loss coefficient is point five. Look carefully, this diameter, so that means from here to here, five centimeter. So this pipe is five centimeter diameter pipe. And throughout, that we like to the outlets, it's five centimeter. You look here, 
from here to here this is nine meter this elevation is nine meter so um we can say kind of uh up to this it is kind of nine meter so i'll so if this is nine meter and now from here to here this is 80 meter this is a sharp as you know, the standard elbow here is one here is one so two elbows the standard elbows and this is the corresponding loss coefficient we have a valve here so for this valve we know it is fully open it is fully open point two and we have this is one outlet so we'll get minor loss for all these sections so this is one this is one one two this is one three five so all the minor losses are here so um i believe you understand now we'll solve this question in according to the question it says you need to calculate mind the elevation jadon for the fluorid so it's later per second it's pretty interesting problem we need to calculate the elevation jadon but i can give you this question in the exam and i can tell you you don't calculate the pumping power you calculate the pump edge this sort of thing okay so what we will do we will use simply the energy equation for this problem and we'll try to measure the the the, the elevation i mean this height this is J2. We do we know J2? Yes, J2 is given four meter. You look here. So this height is given four meter. Okay, so moving to the next phase, I will use the energy equation. Okay, before going to move to the next phase, who can tell me how long this five is? Can anyone tell you, uh, you know, tell me like, what is the length for this pipe from the inlet to the outlet? Uh, 80 meters, right? Anyone else? 89. Okay, so Bing, you said 80. Michael, you said 89. This is 89. Okay. Uh, this is 80. That means from here to here. But we have, you see, this is the pipe. It's coming this way. So we have got also nine meter distance here. So this nine meter and this 80 meter. So here we need, that means total 80 plus nine. So total 89 meter distance we have. This is the overall pipe. Yep. Now um, we'll start. So if I start solving, I said I will uh, use the energy equations. So if we write, the energy equations between point one and two. So then you can say P1 rho g alpha one v1 squared two g j one and uh, let's say the pump heads P2 rho g alpha two v2 squared two g j two um, the turbine heads the hay cell. We do not have pump and turbine. So it first cancel out that term. We have the points, this is point one, this is point two. So it is the air water interface. It is open surface, open tank. Um, so we can say this is kind of the atmospheric or the gas pressure over there. So we can, also cancel out that term similarly the velocity we can assume that okay this is open this is open so that's the top surface of the water it is on the top surface we can say this is zero velocity that we are using this as a for many problems so use this is also zero now you see our problem becomes so small like j1 this is equal j2 plus Hazel. So, what we found, 
we found that j don't equal j2 plus i cell so we need to calculate the head loss and then we have done with the problem head loss and what we know from today's lecture and from previous understanding the head loss this is the major loss and the minor loss so we can say the Hays L, this is equal to the Hays L major and the Hays L minor. Or if I use the mathematical expression, so it will be kind of F L over D and summation of the KL, that means um, the sum of all the loss coefficient, V square 2G, isn't it? You can ask me that why you are using summation here, but you are not using the summation here. Look, we have the pipe with a single diameter. It is uh, five centimeter, it's given here. So we will have only one friction factor value because if we have different diameter pipe, <clears throat> then we will have, we need to consider those, isn't it? And if you ask me then why you are using the summation here, I'm using summation because we have this is one minor loss, this is another one, this is another one, this is another one, this is another one. So five different um, positions and we have the minor losses over there. So <clears throat> yeah, what uh, we need to do is if we want to solve this high cell, then we need this F, the friction factor. And all of you know the formula. So the friction factor, it is, it means epsilon over D. You need the roughness factor, then you need the Reynolds number. And to calculate the Reynolds number, you need the velocity. So <clears throat> if you want to solve this problem, then you need the, the friction factor and then L over D, epsilon KL, and this this so let's calculate the friction factor at first so to get this friction factor we're going to calculate the velocity at first then once we have the velocity we'll calculate the reynolds number then let's i don't know with d and then f do we know the velocity the, the flow rate guys what do you think do we have the velocity here for this problem yes we have this is six liter per second so <clears throat> Oops, I'm just uh, going to the next page, okay? So we'll do this one now. So initially we'll calculate the flow rate. So, so we have the flow rate. So we'll calculate the velocity. So the velocity V is flow rate over area. Flow rate is six liter per second. If I convert it into, you know, the meter cube per second so we can say zero 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 six meter cube per second and the area is pi d square d is the diameter five centimeters so you can say it is zero point five meter square over four so it will be three point zero six meter per second this is the velocity <clears throat> so we need the velocity reynolds number epsilon over d and then friction now calculate the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is density, velocity, diameter, viscosity. All of you know this. Um, <clears throat> for this problem, we have the information. Look here. It is 10 degrees centigrade temperature in the water. So for 10 degrees centigrade temperature, so the water density is 999.7. The velocity is 3.06. Here it is. The diameter is 0 0.05. It is 5 centimeter. We converted it into meter. The viscosity 1.307 and into the power minus 3. We will get this two information from the table. For 10 degrees centigrade temperature. So we have got it is 1 on 7, 0, 0, 0. So do you think, guys, this is a 
a laminar flow, what would you think? Is it a laminar flow or it is a turbulent flow? Who can tell me? Turbulent. Michael is a turbulent. And how about the others? Good. Um, so you guys said this is turbulent flow. Yeah, so that's correct. Uh, it is turbulent flow. If it is laminar flow, then we can easily calculate the, the friction factor below, especially for laminar flow. It is uh, 64 over RE, that's the formula, okay. So now uh, calculate the epsilon over D. So the roughness, the roughness value is epsilon over D. Um, it is here, um, what is the material? The roughness we know, let's go back. It is a, <clears throat> the cast iron. The cast iron roughness is, um, yeah, 0.26. Yeah, this is the cast iron. So 0.26, oops. So uh, it was in, in millimeter. Um, and our diameter is given in centimeters. So let's um, convert it. So that one also in centimeter. Um, okay, we'll convert both into meter. So let's say point two six. It is so it will be point zero 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 two six meter, and it will be zero point zero five meter. So meter meter we can cancel out. So this epsilon over D, it will be 0 0.0052. So this is epsilon over D, we have got. Now, you just use the Colebrook equation. The Colebrook equation, how to solve the Colebrook equation. I uploaded um, a spreadsheet. You just need to put the values over there, and then it will simply give you the, um, the friction factor value, okay? So it is one over square root of f minus two. This is log, and this is, you know, um, epsilon over d. This is 3.57 plus, this is, sorry, 3.7 and plus 2.51 and the Reynolds number and the square root of f. This is uh, the formula. So what do you need to do? You need to substitute all the values to log epsilon over d is 0 0.0052. It is 3.7. It is 2.51. The Reynolds number um, 1 on 7, 0, 0, 0, and the square root of f. So if we solve it, then we'll get f equal 0 0.0315. So this is the friction factor value we got. So uh, we have got the friction factor value and then uh, now we can easily solve this. So whatever I did, it is just the repeated calculation we are doing many times uh, during the tutorials and the lecture problems. But now um, I will tell you, you guys use uh, this equation and to make your life more easier, um, I will already upload it. Uh, the spreadsheet, the Excel file in the Teams group. So you can get the Teams, you know, the Excel file from there, put the values, and then it will simply give you the friction factor value here. So we got this. Uh, I believe you're not still writing. So what we know, we know our head loss is F L over D plus summation of KL and it will be B square and 2G. So we have got F, we know L, we know D. Now we need the summation of KL. The summation of KL, that means all the head loss. So we have this one for the sharp is in like 0.5. We have two standard elbow. So we can say it is two into 0 0.3, okay? Plus, um, this is 0 0.2 for a gate valve, and um, but they say it is 1.06. So in total, it will be 2.36. This is the loss coefficient. 
the total minor loss coefficient. So now you just put it uh, everything here. So we got the friction factor is point, you know, zero three one five, and the length um, eighty nine meter. The diameter is zero point zero five. Plus it is two point three six into the velocity squared is three point velocity is three point zero six. Um, Yeah, we calculated the velocity from the from the volume flow rate, and two into nine point eight one. So the head is L, the head loss is twenty seven point nine meter. So we have got the head loss, and you all of you can remember from the energy equation we had J on equal J two plus head is L. So J two it is given four meter. And it is 27.9, so it is 31.9 meter. And this is Jado, and this is what we were looking for. So, uh, this is the Jado. We just made a lot of calculation, that's it, but uh, it was pretty straightforward techniques. So, we calculated the uh, the friction vector by using the Colebrook equations and then we calculated the minor loss and then we got um, the the elevation here this one so if um, I do a quick review of what I did then maybe it will be much clear here um, all this information was given. We used the the energy equations. We said at this point, this point, the pressure and velocity is similar. So we, we cancel it out. We do not have any pump or turbine. We cancel it out. So now it's J on equal J2 plus uh, HSL. We need this HSL, the major loss. So it's total loss. So this is the formula for total loss. F was unknown. So we use this workflow, like we followed this. According to that flow chart, we calculated the flow rate, we calculated the velocity, then the Reynolds number, then epsilon over d, the roughness factor, and then we used the Colebrook equations. We got the friction factor value. We substitute the friction factor value here, but before we're going to do that, we calculated the sum of this minor loss coefficient, and finally we got the head loss. We put the head loss here, and we got J on. So uh, I believe you understand it. Anyone got any question, guys? We have got uh, 14 minutes, so if you do not have a problem, let's move to the next phase. I will quickly show you some flow meters. I will not discuss a lot, and we can finish um, maybe in five to ten minutes. We do not need much time. Maybe we can finish in five minutes if you want. So, yeah, flow. When we're talking about the the pipe flow or any other flow. Um, this is not um, all this content what I'm going to show you. It is not 100% uh, relevant with the pipe. In some cases, it is a little bit different, but you look here. Uh, this is some device that we can use and we can, we can measure the fluid flow. So we'll start from here. The, the pitot and the pitot static uh, probes. Uh, this is some device. We usually use it in wind tunnel. Um, if you did the wind tunnel experiments um, for the pressure, um, we put some point, the Peter static probe, and at that point, we actually calculate the static pressure. And this is the point where we calculate the stagnation pressure. Stagnation, I said, this is the point where the velocity is zero. If you if you read it, I have uploaded everything. So if you read it, how it works. So basically, we we can use it in the wind tunnel. And this is uh, some some more to like some classical arrangement of um, the spitter tube and how to calculate the the velocity from this formula. So we use the Barnard equation, and we we discussed this um, maybe a couple of weeks back. But this is one of the flow meter. Now, 
the obstruction flow meter. So when we are doing the pipe flow, any the venturi, the, the orifice, or any kind of the nozzle diffusers. Um, so uh, you see it is, let's say in light, this is the outlet. We have, this is the pins, that's the obstruction. So it becomes narrow. So for all this section, we can use the obstruction flow meter. So here is some formulas. We, we do not need it. And uh, the obstruction flow meter, uh, this is the, the volume flow rate formula. Here you can see one term is CD, and this is how we can get that CD. It depends, like more complicated problem when you need in real life, then sometimes you may need it. So that's I'm showing you. And here is some, um, uh, you know, um, common types of abstraction majors, like what we can expect in real cases. Here, some orifice meter, and this is the, this is actually the general picture and it is how it works. So as I said, I'm not going to explain it a lot, but you can uh, see it later on. You can see it has some, all this, it, this is, you can say there's the cross-sectional view. The turbine flow meters, this is also another important one, like um, we can actually uh, calculate the liquid flow, we can measure the flow. And this is general figure, this is the cross-sectional view. And this one, it is also like um, the, the metal, like how we can calculate the, the air pressure. So here it is some displacement flow meters. It is the cross-sectional view, like how it works. Here's some paddle wheel uh, flow meter. This is cheap, easy to um, construct. Uh, it, it works like you, you see kind of, it looks like kind of a, um, piston cylinder device, this one. So it, it basically it has some rotors, some blades, and you, you look here how it works. The flow is going this way. So this is also a good and low cost flow meter. And this is one of the cheapest and the easiest simple um, flow meters. Basically we used uh, this one to calculate the, the pressure drops, low pressure, and yeah, so this is, uh, it has two systems. You see two types of variable area flow meter. Um, sometimes the gravity based and the spring opposite meter. You can read it if you really want to know much about it. We have the ultrasonic flow meters. So basically in some cases, people cannot actually hear some sound, some ultrasonic range. So this flow meter is useful for that cases the Doppler effect ultrasonic flow meter. So we we can do some modeling for all these cases, some CFD. Um, okay, the vortex flow meter, electromagnetic flow meters. So all these types of flow meters you can uh, see in real life. And apart from all this, we have some more different types of flow meters. So if you're interested, you can go through this and read it, but this is not important for you. But maybe uh, in real life, you may need all this concept. Not all this concept, maybe sometimes, depending on the projects, you may need some understanding. So um, that's all today, guys. That all I wanted to discuss. And um, what I can say, we solved two problems today. This is very important just carefully review all the content what i discussed and before going to you know end this session do you have any any questions like what i said so far we will ask for feedback from next week and i will tell tell you just everyone please complete the the sfs this is the final one last time you didn't and some of you you know last time the, I, I was Actually, I was expecting much better feedback. Uh, the way we're trying to support you, um, I believe that all of you will complete it, but you didn't complete the feedback. That's our way. So this time, I wish all of you will complete. You'll put honest feedback, um, like what you loved, what improvement can be done. And yeah, you can definitely compare this subject with some other subject. This is complex, classical, theoretical, and the application this subject so hopefully um i believe that i'm trying my 
best. I'm trying hard to help you, to provide you the best support. And as all of you are attending the class lecture tutorials, hopefully you can get the results in the final exam. And I wish all of you will get to hasty in the final exam. So before going to stop, um, the